is there a gap in your life that you need to fill? Then shims are the thing you need. A shim is a metal or plastic sheet or strip with a precise thickness that we use as a spacer. We use it in mill writing for adjusting the height of a machine, typically placed under the machine feet. Can also be used for adjusting the clearance in between bearings and other parts or gear positions as other examples. We have here some examples of the sizes that are available. We have some A style shims, B, C, and D. The A shims, as an example, have a dimension two by two, roughly. Three by three for B. They are also available in plastic shims. We have plastic or polymer shims. They are color coded to their thickness. Typically, steel shims have markings on the front, on the top side somewhere, indicating their thickness. Typically, in either thousands of an inch or in millimeters. Metal shims come in all kinds of different flavors. Plain carbon, steel, galvanized steel, stainless, brass, aluminum, the list goes on and on. Can be available all kinds of places. Typically they start in thickness around one thou, one thousandth of an inch or 0 0.02 millimeters, ranging in thickness to usually around 125 thousandths or 3.2 millimeters. The idea is that we have the availability and option in a shim kit to create the optimum spacing, ideally with three or four shims or less. Now, as a good practice, it is always good to measure each shim before it is used. I have noticed that some shims are not created equally. Some brands of shims can be quite accurate among the variety of shims they make, and some can actually be quite inaccurate. Here I have a 75 and a 100 thousandth shim. When I measure the 75 thousandth shim, it actually does measure 75 thousandths of an inch, which is perfect. But this 100 thousandth shim is actually 3 thousandths, almost 3 thousandths of an inch smaller than it says it is on the etching on the front. If I put this shim in thinking it was 100 thou, I can create a problem that not filling the the space in that soft foot or other device correctly. Since we're talking about measuring shims, when shims are stacked together, we call it a shim pack or a shim stack. The best way to get the most accurate dimension for all of those shims in that collection is to measure each shim individually. When measured individually and then added together, there will be less error than if measured all together, stacked together with one micrometer, reading all of them together. Here is an example of a kit that comes with various shims in it. These kits are designed in a specific way to create over 150 thousandths of an inch worth of spacing with less than three shims. That gives us the greatest accuracy and stability underneath the feet of a motor or other machine. So I'm gonna be a little sacrilegious here and write on some paper with a whiteboard eraser marker. Let's pretend for a minute we needed 87 thousandths of an inch. There is no such thing as an 87 thousandths shim. So I would need to find a combination of these shims from this kit here to make 87 thousandths of an inch. The way I would start is finding a shim that's closest to 87 without going over. So looking through our kit here, we have 50, 25, we have 75,000 shims. The next size up are 100,000 shims. Well, 100,000s are too large, so let's stick with the 75,000 shim. Our remainder is 12. We still have 12 thousandths of an inch to fill. Let's go through the same thing again. We have 10, we have 15, but we don't have a 12,000 shim. I would take the 10,000 shim, giving me a remainder of two. 
find through here a tooth thou shim giving me a total of 87 thousandths of an inch. I've done this without going over the limit of four shims. Any more than four once again creates the possibility of inaccuracy in that shim pack. Just as a safety note, for a point of reference here, the smallest shim available in most kits is one thousandth of an inch. To give you an idea of how thin a one thousandth shim is, standard notepad paper ranges between three and four thousandths of an inch. Paper can easily cut your fingers without much difficulty. One thousandth shims are even more razor blade sharp. Please be careful when handling one thousandth shims. There are other variations of shims. Here are some examples of shims we use in one of the projects here at SATE. They are circular cut shims of varying thicknesses. We have some polymer plastic variation and the steel variation as well. Other variations of shims, we have shim in a can. Basically this is sheet shim stock. This one specifically is five thousandths of an inch, but they do come in other variations as well. This is an example of another type of shim. This is a feeler gauge style where it's about half an inch wide and then it has printed on it the thickness. So this is one of our alignment stands here at SATE we use for training our millwrights. The principle and idea of this setup, is we have our fixed pump here and we're trying to align the motor to the pump. Vertically, the way that is done is by using those shims and placing them underneath the feet to create an accurate position vertically. My suggestion is when these shims are changed, loosen the front two motor bolts while leaving the back two tight and using a pry bar to lift up on the front of the motor to change the shims to the appropriate size needed. Then tighten the front feet loosen the back feet and make the change to the back of the motor as well. Then retorque those. The idea is by doing it two feet at a time, front then rear or rear then front, the horizontal position of the machine is maintained. If I wanted to adjust the height of this by ten thousandths and add ten thousandths under the front of each foot, I would first loosen the front two while leaving the back tight. Then place the shim underneath the motor foot. Be careful not to put the shim right up against the bolt. If it's placed up against the bolt, the bolt can destroy and damage the shim itself. Good practice is to push the shim in all the way and then just back it out a little bit. Just enough that it's supporting the foot. Now it looks like on this one we have a little bit of soft foot. The way to correct that would be taking a set of feeler gauges and measuring the gap and then adding another shim in there. Another important best practice while making adjustments to the height of a machine like a motor is to always remember and record each of the shim packs. And what I mean by this is the calculations done in an alignment will tell you the amount that you need to raise or lower the machine. If you already have existing shims under the foot, add the new amount that you're adding and the existing amount of shims underneath that foot to each other to give you a total and verify that total before the motor is torqued back into position. It's even more handy when it is all recorded on one sheet of paper. So for the adjustment I just made with the machine, the motor I have on the stand there, I had 125 thousandths already under the front two feet. I added 10 more. If I measure that shim pack or each of those shims and they are not 135, it's easy for me to track and check now. I have a recording of what each shim pack should be 
I can then double check it when I go to make a move again later and even if I make a move that is incorrect I can go back to a, a, a point that I knew was good and put those shims back in place and I can try again. If there's a soft foot condition where the motor foot is actually sitting at an angle relative to the base. We can measure on both sides of the foot, find the amount of angularity on that soft foot. Now we need to fill this so that when the motor is tight, tightened down, the bolt head is torqued, that foot isn't flattened, which would cause stress to the motor. The best practice here would be to machine it flat, take the motor off the base, take it to a machine shop and they can mill all the feet to the same height and parallel to each other. That is somewhat impractical most of the time. Best practice would be to create some type of stepped shim pack. Shims typically in about four steps to fill that space. Now those are just standard shims cut with a, um, either an angle grinder, a zip disc, or uh, tin snips, something along, along those lines. Be careful when that's done that there is no burr or rolled edge on the end of the shim. That can cause problems later. For more information about how to find and correct soft foot, I have a video about soft foot I'll link in the description. I hope that answered all the questions you had about shims and now you are prepared to fill the gap in your life.